Hi divers, thanks for joining. I'm Jim from Discovery Divers uh, in Tokyo coming at you today. And uh, today's background, we've got uh, the Chiba dive, our Sharknado, which is a really popular dive and kind of a fun background. Um, today's topic, today's the first of the leadership series, the dive leadership series that I've been meaning to start. And the topic is uh, DM dive leader training and why that's like spider sex. It's kind of a running joke in our group. Uh, maybe I'm the only one who's laughing at it, but uh, I will show you why I think there are a lot of similarities between uh, dive leadership training and, and spider sex. Uh, first, I want to explain dive master training. There are basically two types, right? Uh, there are the two or three week intensive courses. Maybe you see very often there are tropical location. You know, it's kind of like a factory. They can just keep going. Uh, let me see, Thailand has a lot of locations, Mexico, uh, Philippines, uh, there are probably many others that, that I don't know of. You know, you go there, you might even work on a, a liveaboard or uh, some sort of a intensive dive operation. You get a good amount of experience and uh, in two to three weeks, you know, you're, uh, you're a dive master. Then there's the second method that I prefer. And so mentoring is more the preferred method of, of our training style for leadership, right? Um, and I prefer that for the average candidate. I don't see how two to three weeks of skills and checking boxes can prepare someone to be a dive leader. Um, that's just my opinion. Your mileage may vary understandably. Right? Also, uh, it's my personal opinion that uh, a good dive master has seen a lot of <laughs> hit a lot of fans. And uh, for if a diver, uh, so if a dive master candidate is relatively inexperienced and goes through some short training program, two or three weeks, probably they're not gonna see a lot of adversity, a lot of challenges that they have to deal with. Uh, during a season, one, two, or three months of, of training and intensive diving, leading dives, dealing with divers, being in different situations, uh, my personal experience is those people often see some shit hitting fans and therefore, you know, they're growing from that. Uh, they're learning how to deal with adversity. They're seeing some different kinds of problems and then they learn how to avoid those problems, right? That's the kind of dive master I'd want my child to be with, right? If I'm going to, if I'm going to entrust uh, my child with a dive master, hopefully it's one who's, who's seen a lot happen and, and knows uh, how to head off trouble before it happens. And so mentoring requires a lot of personal contact, right, between uh, the mentor, the, the instructor or, or course director and, uh, and the, the candidate. And uh, it's very important to have common goals, common philosophies, and it's not always a good match. And maybe you train with this person uh, for your advanced or master diver, and you really didn't have a lot of intimate contact, a lot of intimate discussions. Maybe these uh, philosophy mismatches or matches never came up. Um, but it's, it's a good time to, to find out <laughs> Uh, before you enter into this uh, long-term uh, relationship, which could be one month, two months, three months, right? Generally a season. Okay, so we're getting into why why this uh, spider sex uh, analogy. Probably you know, right? So the, the female spider is, is almost always is very huge compared to the male. Uh, and, you know, the female spider is kind of, you know, usually in feeding and defense mode. And when th this little tiny male is, is coming up to the female, right, it's only two things that are going to happen, right? Something very good or very bad, right? Either, either, either there's going to be some, some sex going on, some reproductive activity, or he's going to get eaten. Actually, or both, I think. I mean, some of these spiders actually don't do well even, even after the good thing happens. But let's imagine there's, there's an, an A and a B choice, right? And for me, in my experience, the dive master mentoring is very often like this, right? So, so to be clear, the analogy, right? The spider sex analogy. So uh, this uh, mentor and the candidate coming together in close proximity. And one of two things are going to happen, very different things, right? The good thing is either they're going to have some great training, have some great experiences and learn a lot. And uh, it's going to produce a fantastic uh, dive master for the rest of their dive career. Or uh, the training will not work out well because maybe they won't see things eye to eye and either one or both of those people will decide to 
uh, exit the training, right? Terminate the training. Uh, those are are the two the two options there. Uh, so choose your mentor well. You know, make sure you have the same values and goals uh, when it comes to scuba and scuba training, and always a good idea on both sides, right? To state your expectations clearly before the onset of training as much as possible. Get it all out in front so you can avoid uh, wasted time and, and uncomfortable situations, right? Um, stating your expectations and, and how you feel the training is going to go, what your expectations are for achievement of various levels and whatnot, all right? Okay. All right. Hopefully for you dive master candidates or future dive master candidates out there, uh, this is going to help you out. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Uh, maybe see you on the beach. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Okay, thanks for watching. All right, well, if you like this kind of thing and uh, you think you'd like to see more, uh, I think there's a subscribe button right around here somewhere. And if you are coming to Japan and you'd like to hook up with us and dive, I think right around here there's a spot where you can click, come and have a look at the webpage and see what kind of events are going on. All right. Thanks a lot. See you on the beach. Bye.